Hello, I'm Wayne from Talk Cars, and in this video we're going to be talking about diesel tuning and uh, we're going to answer the following questions. How do you tune a diesel engine? Is it worth tuning a diesel engine? And which mods give the most bang for your buck when it comes to spending money on your diesel tuning project? The diesel engine has certainly come a long way. Many years ago it was regarded as smelly, agricultural and smoky. And today it's a refined performance car beating many traditional sports cars in terms of raw performance. So the diesel engine has come a long way and much of that is thanks to the advances in technology. We've seen the development of turbos. We've seen the addition of direct injection, allowing very fine control over the fueling. And all of that has come together to create this power plant of an engine that goes into our diesel cars today. So let's look at some of the mods that we can do on the diesel engine. Before we start, we'll look at the difference between a petrol engine and a diesel engine. So the engines work in a very similar way. Fuel and air is in the cylinder and it's compressed and then it ignites and that explosion pushes the piston down, rotating the crank, giving you the power. In a petrol engine, it needs a spark to just initiate that burn cycle. So the petrol engine can have quite a lot of control over when to best time the spark. In a diesel engine, you use the compression. So as you compress something, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. When that fuel and air mix is compressed, it just ignites and that leads to a very efficient burn but it does restrict the RPM range of the diesel engine. They operate in a much narrower power band, but they produce oodles of torque. When you start tuning a car engine of any type, be it petrol or diesel, you need to supply more fuel and more oxygen. They need to be provided in a very exact ratio, otherwise you get all sorts of misfires and problems with your engine. So when it comes to tuning, you just push in more fuel and more air. Because most of our viewers have got turbo diesels, we're going to focus on the turbo diesel engine and they certainly offer a massive return for your money when it comes to tuning them up. On the older diesel engine, you pretty much could only increase the fuel rail pressure and the air. It was effective, you, you made a lot more power, but modern engines allow much finer adjustment over the air supply from the turbo and also the fuel for each individual cylinder can be controlled to a very very fine degree. Manufacturers have gone that way to meet the stringent emissions regulations that seem to get tighter and tighter every year but that's a benefit to us tuners because it means we've got more more things we can tweak, more things we can change and we can work to extremely tight tolerances. So we said that diesel engines have a, a much narrower power band than petrol engines. So does that mean it's worth tuning them? Well, think about an analogy of two shovels. You have a large shovel which shifts large amounts in a short time, requires a lot more effort. Or you can have a small shovel and you can move small amounts, but you can do it more quickly. It's very much similar to petrol and diesel engines they overall offer the same amount of performance, but one does it in a very tight power band range. The other spreads it out over a longer power band. So we're gonna look at an example of a car. It's quite an old model now. Um, it's the Peugeot HDI with the 2.2 engine from about 2001. Now you can take the base engine, which was about 136 brake horsepower, and it increases to 192 brake horsepower fairly easily, 40% more power. And the mod that does that only takes about 15 minutes to install and set up. Torque is equally increased and you, you end up with an engine that is far more powerful than many sports cars. And that's just an old diesel engine. The newer ones give even more scope. So what is this magic mod that can give so much more power? Well, it's a remap. Inside the car's engine, you've got a computer that controls the ignition timing. 
the boost, it looks at the engine load, the RPMs, and all those parameters are governed very, very exactly. So by altering the map and the characteristics, you can actually increase the power the engine offers. Not only do you get more power, but on a diesel, you usually get better fuel economy because you need less throttle for the same amount of output from the engine. So it really is a bit of a no brainer going for a remap on a diesel engine. Some diesel engines can't be mapped. And if that applies to you, then you've got two options. You can get an aftermarket ECU, which completely replaces your car's ECU. They are great devices. They allow so much scope for tuning. They're, they're far more advanced in most cases than the stock ECU that comes with your car. Or you can get a piggyback ECU, which sits between your car's ECU and the components in the engine and it will basically take readings from one and lie to the other in order to maximize the power to maybe increase the fuel increase the air now word of warning there's a lot of very cheap tuning boxes you can usually identify them because they have just one connection and that one connection generally just dumps more fuel it increases the fuel rail pressure you will get more power but often it's smoky and just dumping more fuel in can cause all sorts of other problems, um, notably soot build up in the engine. And this all builds up over time, creating a problem further down the line. So it really is a false economy. And sadly, some expensive tuning boxes are little more than one of these little resistors that just adjust the fuel rail pressure in order to make more power. So be very careful. Ask around, get reviews. Um, look at our website at some of the uh, reviews that we've done and things that our, our members are saying about these different options. And that way you can avoid many of the pitfalls and problems that come along with that. So why do diesels have so much tuning potential? Well, they're over-engineered due to the nature of the way they work under those extremely high pressures. You need to over-engineer everything and use very tough components, which gives you quite a wide margin for error allowing us to take up some of that slack that the manufacturers have built in for reasons of reliability and longevity and we can release so much more power. Now cynically a lot of people have said that diesels are deliberately undertuned so the manufacturers can sell petrol models and it's interesting that if you put a stopwatch and actually get stats for many diesel engines they're much faster and more powerful than the factory figures usually claim and suggest. So a remap adjusts the air and fuel and allows you to make more power. Are there any other mods that we should be talking about when it comes to your turbo diesel engine? Well yes, larger turbos. There's a, a few options open to us. Um, the most popular and easy one to install is a hybrid turbo where a standard turbo casing is taken and where the internals are stripped out and you replace them with uprated internals that can make more power you can change the spool up characteristics or maybe um, raise the power band to the the top end of the rpm range the other option is just going with a larger turbo if you buy this as a kit you'll often get a manifold that can just bolt onto your engine so they make it quite easy um, but sometimes you'll get a larger turbo and you will need to adjust the pipe work in the engine and all the connections in order to get it to fit and work properly. But that is a good way to get the really big power gains. But bear in mind the factory injectors and the factory fuel pump can only push out so much fuel. If they do not supply enough fuel for this large amount of air coming into the engine, you'll get flat spots, the engine's going to throw error codes, you'll get warning lights on your dashboard. The car may even go into limp home mode and the power will be dramatically reduced. So you really do need to over specify your turbo and your injectors to make sure you've still got a little bit of leeway because as those components get older, their performance will degrade. And if your car is tuned and set up, assuming everything is going to work at its optimum efficiency, as soon as it drops a little bit, you're going to have all sorts of problems. So like the manufacturers, we need to build in a little bit of slack that 
age and wear and tear will take up over time. So modern diesel engines have particulate filters. They filter out the soot particles from the exhaust. They can get clogged up. Now that tends to happen a lot if the engine doesn't get hot. If you do lots of short journeys or you don't really use the full range of the engine, you're only ever pootling along in fairly low RPMs, you can actually get build up. And we've got an article on our site with some methods on how to clear uh, a blocked DPF and to clean the DPF um, when it becomes an issue. A few years ago, people used to take the DPF off completely because they were a lot of trouble and frustration. That's now illegal in pretty much every state where emissions regulations have become more stringent. So that's no longer an option on a street car if you want your car to be legal on the roads. We would recommend that when you've tuned your diesel engine, you shorten the service interval. So the manufacturer may specify 12 months, 12,000 miles. You're working everything harder. The engine oil is really taking a beating. It would be sensible to reduce your service interval to maybe nine months or 9,000 miles, um, depending on how aggressively you've tuned it. You want to keep your car in top condition. You're working it harder. It makes sense to up your maintenance regime a little. And in some cases, you may need to use a slightly different grade of oil because your engine again is working under a different set of higher performance characteristics. So the manufacturer specified oil may not be enough. It, it may not lubricate the engine under those amounts of stress or heat that are being generated. So we're often asked about other upgrades. People often ask us about exhausts and intakes on diesel engines. Now, most manufacturers have over-specified their exhausts and their intakes on diesel engines because they operate in a fairly low RPM band. And you won't usually hit a restriction unless you do some really aggressive tuning. So unless you are finding there's a restriction in your intake or in your exhaust, we wouldn't recommend you do any changes to those on a diesel engine. There's just no point. You're not going to get more power. Some people also look at the flywheel. So it's traditional when you're tuning a car to look at lightening the flywheel. Most diesels come with a dual mass flywheel where there's two elements to the flywheel on a, a spring and that is designed to take up a lot of vibration from the engine. Most diesels actually need that. If you go to a single plate flywheel or a lighter flywheel, you will get a lot of vibration. You'll be putting a lot of wear and tear on the drivetrain. And we've heard from a lot of people that have done that mod and been really disappointed with the end results and they've ended up having to go back to a dual mass flywheel. So learn from their example. There are a few very refined diesel engines out there that you can get away with a lighter flywheel or going from a dual mass to a single. But in the main and in our experience, we would recommend sticking with the dual mass flywheel. Our diesels actually more polluting well, nowadays, due to the stringent emissions regulations and the addition of particulate filters and the very lean burn nature of the modern diesel engine, they're usually much cleaner than even the petrol counterparts. They've really come a long way. And a lot of the tech that we've seen in diesel engines is finding its way into petrol engines. Direct injection, where the fuel is injected directly into the cylinder, allows you to run much higher compression ratios and makes everything more efficient. So by applying that tech to petrol engines, we're allowed to fit turbos and run extremely high compression ratios, big amounts of boost, and we can get really large amounts of power out of relatively small engines. We see many 1.4 litre engines with a turbo producing as much power as an older two litre engine would and doing it much more efficiently using less fuel. So it's quite impressive to see how things have come. And we certainly want to exploit all of these advances in technology. Fitting new tech to an older car can often give you a boost in power as you increase the efficiency of the engine. So the benefits of diesel are tenfold, really. I've owned a diesel. I really loved it. It worked well. The fact that when remapped, you'll get more fuel economy and more power is a massive bonus. 
thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe it really helps us to get out there the more people that subscribe to our channel and the comments and what cars you've got what mods you've done to it really help us to shape future content on both our website and on this video channel thanks for watching and see you in the next video